Hello, good evening and welcome to St. Peter's West Knighton for evening prayer on Friday the 19th of October, the Lesser Festival of Henry Martin. If you'd like to follow the main body of evening prayer, you'll need to turn, and you're following in the red uh, Common Worship Daily Prayer books, you'll need to turn towards the beginning and after prayer during the day, you'll find morning and evening prayer, ordinary time and the seasons, and evening prayer on Friday in ordinary time is what we'll be working from, or if you've got it in the app, it'll be prepared, uh, presented to you um, as you need it. Equally, if you're following in the book, material for Henry Martin, which is pretty much, I think, only possibly the collect and the uh, refrain as we open and close the Magnificat, can be found two-thirds of the way in, <coughs> in the Sanctuary, the list of saints' days, feasts and festivals. Under today's date, Henry Martin, you'll find direction there for where you need to turn in the book for the extra material. Evening prayer on Friday. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of entreaty. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me, my heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hand to you. My soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. <clears throat> o Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> and so we turn to the back of the red book for our Psalter, or scroll down as appropriate. And the appointed psalm in this evening, Psalm 145. If you're following in the red book, do make sure you are right at the back. Amongst the psalms, and the numbers tend to be printed with the word psalm beforehand. And if you've just got a number, you're likely to be the canticles which come immediately beforehand. Psalm 145, the refrain begins, Great is. We open and close with that refrain, saying the glory be before we repeat it for the second time, and the use the prayer that follows in silence if we choose. Psalm 145. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. <clears throat> they shall speak of the majesty of your glory, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts, and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, 
and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power <clears throat> to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and, and let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. So we turn to the canticle, A Song of the Justified, which is, I think, the standard one for Friday evening prayer. A Song of the Justified. Now hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe. He believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins, and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. reading from the Indian Journal of Henry Martin, 1st January 1807, Dinapur. Seven years have passed away since I was first called of God. Before the conclusion of another seven years, how probable is it that these hands will have mouldered into dust? But be it so, my soul through grace hath received the assurance of eternal life, and I see the days of my pilgrimage shortening without a wish to add to their number. But, but oh, may I be stirred up to a faithful discharge of my high and awful work, and laying aside as much as may be, because the Lord has brought me safely to India and permitted me to begin in one sense my missionary work. My trials in it have been very few. Everything has turned out better than I expected. Loving kindness and tender mercies have attended me at every step. Therefore here will I sing his praise. I have been an unprofitable servant, but the Lord hath not cut me off. I have been wayward and perverse, yet he has brought me further on the way to Zion. Here then, with sevenfold gratitude and affection, would I stop and devote myself to the blissful service of my adorable Lord. May he continue his patience, his grace, his direction, his spiritual influences, and I shall at last surely come off conqueror. May he speedily open my mouth to make known the mysteries of the gospel, and in great mercy grant that the heathen may receive it and live. <clears throat> 18th of February, Baksal, my birthday. 26. With all the numerous occasions for deep humiliation, I have paused for cause for praise in recollecting the promising openings and important changes which have occurred since my last birthday. 
The Lord in love makes me wax stronger and stronger. Walked after breakfast to a pagoda within the fort at Buxar, where a Brahmin read and expounded. It was a scene, I suppose, descriptive of the ancient times of Hindu glory. The Brahmin sat under the shade of a large banyan tree near the pagoda. His hair and beard were white, his head most gracefully crowned with a garland of flowers. A servant of the Raja sat on his right hand at right angles, <coughs> and the venerable man then sung the Sanskrit verses of the Huribuns and explained them to him without turning his head, but only his eyes, which had a very dignified effect. I waited for the first pause to ask some questions, which led to a long conversation, and this ended by my attempting to give them a history of redemption. The Raja's servant was a very modest, pensive man, but did not seem to understand what I said so well, as did the old Brahmin, who expressed his surprise and pleasure, as well as the other at finding a Sahib who cares anything about religion. I afterwards sent a copy of the Nagari Gospels to the servant, desiring that it might be given to the Raja if he would accept it. I rose at four and left Baksar, and at nine in the evening reached Dinapur again in safely, blessed be God. May my life thus preserved by God's unceasing providence be his willing sacrifice. And so to our first reading, Ezekiel 44 from 4 to 16. Ezekiel 44 from 4 to 16. <clears throat> then he brought me by way of the north gate to the front of the temple. And I looked, and lo, the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord, and I fell upon my face. The Lord said to me, mortal Mark, well, look closely and listen attentively to all that I shall tell you according concerning all the ordinances of the temple of the Lord and all its laws. And mark well those who may be admitted to the temple and all those who are to be excluded from the sanctuary. Say so to the rebellious house of the house of Israel, thus says the Lord, God, O house of Israel, let there be an end to all your abominations. In admitting foreigners uncircumcised in heart and flesh to be in my sanctuary, profaning my temple when you offer to me my food, the fat and the blood, you have broken my covenant with all your abominations. And you have not kept charge of my sacred offerings, but you have appointed foreigners to act for you in keeping my charge in my sanctuary. Thus says the Lord God, no foreigner uncircumcised in heart and flesh of all the foreigners who are among the people of Israel shall enter my sanctuary. But the Levites who went far from me, going astray from me after their idols, when Israel went astray, shall bear their punishment. They shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having oversight at the gates of the temple and serving in the temple. They shall slaughter the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall attend on them and serve them. Because they ministered to them before their idols and made the house of Israel stumble into iniquity, therefore I have sworn concerning them, says the Lord God, that they shall bear their punishment. They shall not come near to me <coughs> to serve me a priest, nor come near any of my sacred offerings, the things that are most sacred, but they shall bear their shame and the consequences of the abominations that they have committed. Yet I will appoint them to keep charge of the temple to do all its chores, all that is to be done in it. But the Levitical priests, the descendants of Zadok, who kept the charge of my sanctuary when the people of Israel went astray from me, shall come near to me to minister me, and they shall attend me to offer me the fat and the blood, says the Lord God. It is they who shall enter my sanctuary, it is they who shall approach my table to minister to me, and they shall keep my charge. <clears throat> so, we have put into the mouth of Ezekiel the prophet here a suggestion that um, those who were in charge of worship in the temple, <coughs> excuse me, not only permitted uncircumcised foreigners entry to the temple but also employed them to do work for God that should have been done by those who were ordained to do it from within the tribes of Israel and so that tribe who had the responsibility but didn't take it will no longer be allowed but simply one family from within that tribe <coughs> so the Levites who went far from me going astray shall bear their punishment, but the Levitical priests as descendants of Zadok, so specifically the Zadok family within the tribe of the Levites, who they kept charge of his sanctuary when the people of Israel went astray, it is they who shall enter my sanctuary and they shall keep my charge. <coughs> So 
So I'm not quite sure really how to apply this. I don't think it's for us, for instance, to exclude foreigners from our Christian communities or from our places of worship. And <coughs> the context there is quite specific, so I don't we need to worry about preventing foreigners, for example, for taking office or being ordained into the Christian church. And also I'm not sure that it means either that we need to focus those who are able to minister on our behalf as priests, um, even as sort of a liturgically liturgical deacon type position, I don't think we need to restrict that just to um, certain sorts of people either, which is what this would suggest. So I think what it may present to us is an idea that there is a right way and a wrong way to order worship, and I think we can consider what that might be for us today. But I don't think it's along the lines of exclusion that we see here, which, as I say, were kind of specific to its for its time, and were to do perhaps with that tribe not really taking its duties seriously. They needed to be investing their time doing the duty that they had been called to do. So perhaps we might look back to that pre-Victorian time where people were priests by accident of birth to some extent, and then they employed. Um, curates do their work for them and they acquired livings in a sort of a monopoly game kind of a way and employed curates to do their job for them. It might have something to say to that circumstance. <coughs> so we need to take worship seriously and how we choose and select and ordain and care for those who have been ordained as they fulfil their worship for us. So it might speak into that scenario. So let us turn, move on, I was going to say turn back, move on to John 16, Gospel of John chapter 16, <clears throat> verses 16 to 22. Perhaps this may have wider application. John 16 from 16. A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying to us, a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. They said, what does he mean by this a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, are you discussing among yourselves what I meant when I said a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labour, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. seems to me that the best way to read this is recognise it was written by and for communities who were experiencing the death of the disciples who had lived with Jesus. And they were experiencing persecution and they were not experiencing the return of Jesus, the second coming, which they so eagerly anticipated. And so they were suffering, they were grief stricken and persecuted. And so to have this repeated phrase, a little while, a little while, a little while, in the first half of the paragraph, kind of, it's almost as if this prose is poetic prose, and as I often said, scripture is best read as if it were poetry. And so, a little while, a little while, a little while, just puts that sense of waiting, of anxiety, of hope, <coughs> into the words as we hear them. And it's this clever device. We're, we're given the expression first of all, we're told the disciples are saying it, Jesus then asks the disciples, have they been saying it? And it's a way of having that, those words repeated in a narrative way. <coughs> but then it gives 
in the face of this, in a little while, in a little while, in a little while, in the face of this anxious, <coughs> painful waiting of resolution, of result, re resolution of their pain and grief, Jesus says, you will weep and mourn, you will have pain. Interestingly, he uses the figure of a woman in labour, which was not a particularly <coughs> masculine or male role way of dealing with it, but that's what he uses here. Not the marriage parable which he has used elsewhere, but a woman in labour has pain, but once she has given birth, she is full of joy. He says, so you have pain now, but I will see you again and you, your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. <clears throat> and so for those of us who are finding life a struggle at the moment, whether we are being persecuted, whether things are getting bad for us and getting worse, and we are looking for the answer to our prayers, even the restoration of the kingdom and God appearing <clears throat> in Jesus as his second coming to resolve the situations maybe of the world that are pressing down upon us. May we hear these words, we have pain now, but when we see Jesus, when Jesus sees us again, our hearts will rejoice. <coughs> and so whether we suffer our suffering pain or anguish, we may bear in mind those who we know are as we return to even prayer on Friday for the responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And so to the song of Mary, the refrain begins, how beautiful, which you may be able to turn up if, as I said, you find today's date in the Saints, Days and Festivals section, two thirds of the way into the Red Book. Otherwise, allow me to read that on your behalf and you may join in with the text from my soul. The Song of Mary. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. <clears throat> Let us pray. So at the close of this day and this time of year, it feels like the day is closing as night closes in. <coughs> So we look back over the day and recognise those occasions that have been dark and cloudy for us, <coughs> where night has clouded in <coughs> on us, where we have been absent from you, where we have been hindered from being fully ourselves, where we have been stuck with duty and drudgery. <clears throat> and not being able to be creative, joyous, to rest. Where things have been difficult for us through health, <coughs> problems at work or with vehicles, pets, family and friends.
where we have been let down, where we have let others down. Where those things we have said, thought or done have contributed to your death on the cross. And so we thank you for that death and we pray that we will be able to exchange that which draws us down that you took on your body in our stead. <coughs> we may exchange that for that which may build us up as you raised us to life, as you were raised up on that pole. And so we also, looking back on the day, thank you for those things that have been better about the day because of you and your blessing for us. Our self-confidence, our opportunities to do and be, things we have engaged with, as a result of our being faith-filled and our ministry. <clears throat> Perhaps as we have simply lived our lives out as Christians, we have had opportunities to recognise your blessing those around us through us. Where we have been able to pray, standing with people who were broken. Where we have heard stories of how you have helped and assisted where we have been moved on, where we have moved others on. We thank you for all these stories of empowerment and creativity and hope. <coughs> we thank you for them and pray that they will continue in the days ahead. From open doors, we pray for extremist groups who oppose the growth of the church in India. We pray God will soften their hearts to the gospel and we pray that many will find salvation in Jesus through the witness of his people. We thank you for the church in that place and the individuals that make it up. <coughs> we pray for all organisations that work to bring <coughs> peace and ask that we foment violence, particularly between Hindus and Christians. Their efforts will be foiled and thwarted. <coughs> From Green Christian, as we mark World Food Day and the International Day of Eradication of Poverty, we pray that children who are severely malnourished, <coughs> such as one pictured in this prayer diary, Nyayana, will get the nutrients they need. We pray for peace in South Sudan so communities can plant crops and harvest the land. <coughs> the Diocese of Salisbury Cycle of Prayer has us pray for Lavingtons, Cheverills, and Easterton parishes. We pray for their year in the school. We pray for the year three and four children going on their residential trip to a court in Dorset next week to explore the adventure activities, learn more about interdependence or independence rather and teamwork. We pray for everyone to have a refreshing break in time for reflection at half term. <coughs> and we pray for the pupils and students, 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 pupils and teachers, governors and parents, both of that and the market Lavington St Barnabas School. <coughs> praying that they would all have a fuller experience of you and fuller experience of themselves <coughs> a more blessed life as a result of their engagement with you in those institutions and we pray for those that Anglicans in those parishes work with and for we pray, <coughs> excuse me, we pray for their officers the wardens, treasurer and secretaries and also their minister Marion Pray your blessings of health, wealth, prosperity, salvation, healing, and deliverance on the streets and addresses in Warmwell of Beach Farm, Church Cottages, Down Farm, Heath Cottages, Rectory Cottages, Roman Hill, Rose Cottage, the old rectory, Vise Barn Cottages, Warmwell, and Warmwell House. Pray for those that do not yet know you in those addresses, that they'll be drawn to faith, those that do, that they'll be part of that journey for their neighbours. Pray for people whose lives are not going well, that they'll be turned around and that you'll provide miraculously and through agencies and organisations set up to assist. We pray that neighbours whose lives are going well may be part of that assistance too and they will turn to you with thanksgiving as those who are lacking may turn to you for provision. And we thank you for the businesses based in or serving those addresses and we pray that they too may thrive and flourish. And finally, we pray for Susie and her family, Andrea, Vicky, Clint, Carol, Brian, Seaton, Steph, Peter, John, Guy, David, Elizabeth, Mike, Tony and Graham.
<clears throat> we pray your blessings on these for provision in whatever area of life they find themselves lacking in. <clears throat> Whether they are needing to get out of a relationship, keeping as much intact as they may. Whether they are looking for rescue from sickness in body, mind or spirit. Whether their issue is lack of finance or difficulty with accommodation. We thank you that you are our provider. <coughs> and we pray that you will hear their plea and provide for them. And that you will assist their children, their parents, their spouses or partners, and agencies, voluntary and otherwise, that they may provide the help that is required in each of these cases. And do so in a timely way, and with all the resources that are necessary. Finally, we thank you for all that's good in the lives of Helen, Rose, Susie's dad, Margaret, Alfred, Francis, Richard, and Anthea. We thank you for all that was good in their lives. We also remember Henry Martin and all others whose years mine falls at this time. Giving thanks for him, <coughs> the faith he gave him, the things he stood for, the actions he took, and the lives he changed, and that which he bequeathed to the church in India through your grace and his efforts, his sacrifice. We remember those who served you here, those we've known and loved and seen no longer. All these years mine falls at this time, as we've said, and those who've died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, even those who have taken their own lives. Those who died through accident, who I haven't said that already. We thank you that in you, even where there is death, there is life. We ask that you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom as you promised to humanity. And we bring to you all who mourn, ourselves <coughs> included, and those who are struggling with a change in life circumstance, as well as those who are missing a loved one. And we pray that just as you hovered over the chaos before creation, as the Spirit and the inspired word spoke through the mouth of Jesus and brought not only order, but productivity and beauty, we pray that you will speak those same into our broken lives and into our broken world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, who by your Holy Spirit gave Henry Martin a longing to tell the good news of Christ and skill to translate the scriptures, by the same Spirit give us grace to offer you our gifts, wherever you may lead at whatever the cost. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. <coughs> As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.